few tactical here with some more spore. I felt like I should take a different approach to my commentaries with the fact that I don't talk in some of my videos versus the fact I talk a little bit in other videos. But overall, I don't talk that much. And I'll test where I'm running here. And I want to see how much we can actually talk in this video without choking up. Which is the biggest problem I have with long, elongated speeches. So, this is supposed to really help my speech skills because I take speech next year in high school, so. And after that, it's just. Yeah, I would like to learn to talk better and just my commentary is being improvement and I don't think many of you enjoy my commentary because I don't even talk in my commentary so it's not a commentary then uh, I hope this one will be opening up new doors and windows of opportunity for me to interact with my subscribers and viewers and all that stuff anyways I'm getting sidetracked so let's get back to the fish Alright, so first of all, I would like to point out to you guys that fish are supposed to be ancestrally linked to us through evolution, somehow. In a human embryo, there seems to be slits in the human that they're around the neck region of the human embryo. And as the embryo develops, these little slits grow into the bony-like features in your ears. So scientists decided to take a few fish embryos and they compared them to human embryos and they believe we have common ancestry because they found the same slits in a human embryo as they did in a fish embryo. Only in a fish these little slits become gills and that helps the fish breathe underwater in case you did not know already, which is highly unlikely. Uh, in other words, fish have some relateness with us and every single animal, animal and, well, anything that flies or walks or is supposed to be related to one species. So, where did it all start? Well, that's a good question, you little eaglets, which is what I will be calling all my viewers. Subscribers, however, aren't considered eaglets, and they'll be considered something of higher, higher rank. Um, those that play me online and are my subscribers will be the, just the highest rank you can be, second after me, of course. But um, enough of that. We're getting sidetracked again. Um, anyways, this started out with a fish named Tiktolic, I think. I don't know for sure but this fish had a flat head and it had um, pretty much like wide jaws and eyes on the top of its head and it had fin like arm like fin like limbs that it used the same way a mud skipper would you know like to crawl up onto land now scientists believe this fish um, actually went on land when it had to escape danger it might have stayed in like deeper water, but as soon as danger was nearby, it would swim up to the shallow water. And in doing so, it would crawl up onto the land, and after that, it would just stay on the land until danger was no more. Um, it is the world's first land walking animal, in case you didn't get the point. Um, Alright, so. Now, as you can imagine, this little, little creature eventually evolved to be better suited on land. And I just lost my cough drop. Okay, I got it back. Uh, just let me... Where was I? I was on... It was... Oh, well, we're going to start back at how it was evolved. Alright, so it evolved better to be on land. And so this fish has found this plentiful vegetation, you know, it just covers the place. I think that's where it started to evolve into a much more sophisticated species like 
Um, well, I can't say dinosaurs. Dinosaurs came after um, this little animal and its other reptiles. But this animal just simply evolved into other animals. Carnivores obviously would come after the herbivores, and I think this occurred through uh, Darwin's evolution. And maybe this little Tiktaalik could have been an omnivore. So, for those of you who don't know Darwin's variation theory, um, you will obviously need me to explain that. I will be explaining that for those of you who do sit back and review anything you know if you find something you don't know be happy about it all right so the first thing we will be discussing is the finches now most of you know about these finches <sighs> for those who don't know it was just a type of bird that was isolated in a certain territory and it was forced to adapt right okay so now imagine the galop um these Galapagos finches, they came from the mainland. So the mainland species must have been more different. It would have been variated from the species that flew over to the Galapagos and is now known as the Galapagos finches. And the Galapagos is just a cluster of islands, meaning there could be different habitats and environments on these islands. So this would cause different species to evolve. Now scientists decide to go and find some eggs from these finches nests and at a certain point in their lives these finches as they are developing finches I'm sorry the embryos of these finches as they're developing look alike and then as they were growing much more older they were different because they start to evolve in different beaks different ways um the the basic concept was that something was controlling them and scientists want to know what. And as they did more research they discovered out that these animals were changing and developing differently because of genetics. And what happened in that was pretty much there's switches and levers, also Hawks genes which controlled how much uh, the gene went in, a certain type of gene or DNA went into creating the animal and what might suit it best for its environment. That's why they say a, a younger animal is much more su better suited to the environment than an older one. This You can find this in humans as well. Um, so the finches evolved. But how did they evolve into the right thing? Now this is where survival of the fittest comes in. Now the finches had different beaks. Now the right beak or mutations would occur and depending on what was right in the environment, either the mutation was selected or the other beak, which is normal for all the other mainland birds was selected. Now obviously the mutation was selected because it was a different environment. Um, oh my gosh. Alright, the thing about this is, if you don't fit nature, you will die. Just simple as that. Uh, this is a very harsh reality for maybe some of you eaglets to conceptualize, but the best bird that adapted to the environment had the best chance of um, mating, passing its genes along, and eventually creating a much more successful species than those that are dying out. In other words, variations occurred from a single species. And it's just very, very simple. Once once you understand the whole big picture, you'll be like, oh yes, I understand this. And like I said, I'm not sure if I said this before. I, I explained my theory, but I didn't show you what it is. Anyways, my theory is the fact that Tactolic the first land walking fish was an omnivore i think that and that uh, as it eventually went on to land it feasted on plants because uh, they were in abundant supply and this is where the omnivore part comes in maybe the 
certain omnivores that fed on plants became herbivores, and the carnivorous side of the omnivores saw, oh, look, those nice little different species are yummy. So they became carnivores, and just a race to become an herbivore, a better adapted herbivore to avoid the carnivore began. And from there we have the biological nuclear arms race. It's actually not nuclear, but it's biological, and it's an arms race. It'll count. Anyways, so they're running for their lives. The carnivore is running to keep up for its life. And it's just this huge, like a shockwave was sent out and species evolved, all that stuff. Now, what does this all have to do to relate to Spore, this awesome game that I play? Well, I can't tell you how the evolving works in the game because that would be a spoiler and I don't like spoiling things but I will I do that occasionally anyways I can tell you in Spore you're best off as an omnivore I recommend starting out as a carnivore that way you have like the jaw to defend yourself you can bite other creatures and you can throw your jaw in front of yourself again well in front of the attacker so they won't attack you and it'll be a stalemate where you can't do anything to it and it can't do anything to you unless it turns around then you gotta get shot um, you can advance, and if you want to get the herbivore draw, which I highly recommend, you need to mate, and you have to mate with your mate, pretty much, and for those of you who don't know what that means, I highly recommend you get a dictionary, or have a new tab ready with the words define, um, I think it's semicolon, um, anyways, the two dots, not the dot, and the comma, and if I say a word that you're baffled at, Think you should look it up it's not that hard to pause my video and um, just look up the word um, anyways I won't explain all words because some words I'll just forget and be like oh yeah you guys already know this but if you don't make sure to do that and that way you can keep up with my videos I won't always remember anyways you will go into uh, creature creator and after you mate, for those who really want to know right now, mating means um, just, you know, creating little children to carry on generation. Uh, for those who want a much more explicit definition, look it up. Anyways, you're, you go into the creature creator after you so-called mate. Um, after that, you want to work on your defenses. I recommend getting the spikes, so you, and if you're really good with your mouse scale use the spike. I recommend putting the uh, herbivore's mouth onto the side of your carnivorous one so you can fly by any nice soggy salad and take it in as delicious supper. You will continually evolve, attack any creatures that have a special feature or part about them that you don't have. This will be very very handy. I failed to do that. I don't know why. There were so many amazing opportunities and I failed. I only got the meteorite, which I don't even know if it's in this video. But, um, other than that, you're really all good. And for those of you who want to know my work cited, um, just look up the first land walking fish. And I just needed that name because I didn't know what the heck it was. It was around 370 or 350 million years ago. Um, for those who want to know where I got the rest of my information, I actually know this. And if you want to know why I know this, too many documentaries. I hope you enjoyed. If you can, please hit the like button. Any rating at least. I know what people would think of my videos, so if you can, leave a rating. And this way I can improve my videos. If you can, leave a comment. That will really help me to understand you more. Feel free to request any games you would like to see. If you subscribe, you will get promoted from Eaglet. I will explain maybe sometime later. But anyways, looking in a dictionary faster, for those of you who, don't, who didn't catch it the first time I said it, um, it's better than waiting for me to upload another video, as I don't have time. Um, other than that, have a nice day. I, I really do hope you enjoyed my video.